Hey guys, I got another story I wanted to bring you. Been under the weather just a little bit, so you'll have to excuse me if I have drainage or whatever. The weather here in Oklahoma has been absolutely crazy. We've been in the 60s. We're now got rain and floods within a drought. And now we have a major, like, I don't know, winter event coming down from the Arctic. So we're like 60s when we're going to be in the negatives and <clears throat> myself and the kids we've all been kind of fighting like sinuses so uh this one comes out of oklahoma uh the name is billy perry this happened on april 12th of 1982 age was 15 when this happened to him location is western oklahoma the suspected animal in this is a bigfoot the moon phase at the time is a waning gibbous 87 percent illuminated now, in this story, it's not just going to be about Billy Perry. It's going to be about the whole Perry family. But Billy was the one that had the first interaction, and uh, that's probably what caused the events to start happening at their place. The thing I found interesting about this story is there are several eyewitnesses, not only in this area, but in an adjacent area that all saw the same thing. And when you investigate things and you get things like that, it just gives a higher probability of something actually been there. Uh, just a couple of days before the snow and ice laced western Oklahoma this winter, Billy, a 15-year-old high school freshman, was scouting for, Scott, for coyote tracks along Trail Creek near his home south of, and I believe it's pronounced uh, Vicky, when a growl made him stop. It's V-I-C-I. -I. The noise came from an animal standing on two legs about 20 yards away. He says, frightened. The young hunter dashed away to his home, which, man, I can remember being a kid when we go to the woods, and um, I want to share a lot of granny stuff in here, so don't you don't want to miss that. If you fast forward through a lot of these, I am going to share some more things today. But uh, yeah, I remember getting scared and running home a lot of times. Uh, it was four or five feet tall and pretty wide. This one did not have a lot of height at all, probably a juvenile. Says Perry, an avid outdoorsman and hunter. It stood upright had kind of a reddish brown hair. In 1977, a search party was formed and they went out and they looked for this creature because they'd had a lot of similar sightings that had been turned into the local law enforcement, which local law enforcement was not taking this uh, serious at all. They, uh, as far as I understand and what I investigated, they didn't even go out and investigate. This was just some good old uh, farm people getting together and going out. And that's why it's important, like I said, know your neighbors, be friends with your neighbors. Uh, I think some people around my area has figured that out now that it helps. Uh, the Perry family says the animal prowled on their property and near their house for more than a month this winter. It was an animal only Billy saw clearly. An animal they smelled, they said smelled like sewer, but unlike any animal he'd ever seen. It had human characteristics, walked bipedal, stunk really bad uh seems like once you have an encounter with these things <clears throat> they tend to follow you home uh just a suggestion if you're ever out and you have an encounter with these things um don't go straight home maybe even to the car wash if you have you know if you've had a direct encounter my uncle uh had a direct encounter before everything started happening at my granny's and uh his direct encounter and what happened is what caused the events at my granny's to start happening. See, we knew, or my granny knew, I still know the family, but she knew the older ones, that they bought that place from a long, long time ago, and they never had any trouble. So the trouble started stemming from whenever her son went out on a spook hunt and ended up having an encounter, and after that encounter, it followed him home that night. And then the sequence of events happened. A lot of that will be in my book I'm writing. And uh, I'm going to explain a lot of the things that went on at my granny's. I have great accounts because all of my aunts and uncles are still alive. And my mom. And they all witnessed it. And then I grew up there. I got to witness a lot of it. And then when my granny got sick, we stayed overnights and stuff. Taking care of her. And I witnessed a whole lot then. So I've lived in this my whole life. Uh, hair samples found by the Perry's house near Vicky were sent to Hayden Hughes, director of the Sasquatch Investigation in Mid-America. The hair sample looked very interesting. At this point, we cannot confirm what kind of animal it came from, he said. He said an investigation sample has been forwarded to the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation Forensic Lab 
in hopes of an, a of an analysis. Uh, there were never any findings released on the hair. Uh, as far as the family said and what I looked up, they are still in possession, not the family, but the uh, FBI crime lab is still in possession of these hairs. And no, uh, no results have ever been given nor spoke about. Um, in recent interviews, the Prairie family told how strange animal disrupted their lives for more than a month after Billy came from his initial encounter. He said, I saw a Bigfoot today. Now, again, whenever this happened to my uncle, he uh, came directly home, and it was at night, and it followed him home and actually arrived that night. Now, as, as the crow flies, it would have had to come across the lake to get to my granny's house. I don't know if it done that or if it followed the hills. Now, if it follows the hills, it's still got some creeks and a large river that it would still have to cross unless it used the highways. Either way, as the crow flies from where this encounter happened, if it would have crossed the lake, it's probably, I don't know, 10 miles. Following the highways, it's gonna be around 20, some 22 miles maybe. So it did follow him home. And then the thing is, once you have this encounter, you have to change your way of life. Everybody at my granny's, they lived on a farm. My grandpa was a logger. He was gone a lot. He was in New Mexico, Texas, and all around. He traveled. He logged. He was a hardworking man. And my family worked for him. He had the first uh, sawmills in, around this area. But anyways, he was always gone, which left my granny at home with the eight kids. Uh, some of the kids were older, like my uncle. He served in Vietnam. He was a little older. And then she had the younger ones. And they all went through all this. All of them did. And some of the things that they had to change was they couldn't leave the food outside anymore. You know, they they couldn't throw the dog scraps outside the back door because when they did, it was just like it was out there breathing. And as you saw in my video, my friend that gave his account of what he saw down there didn't believe it, you know, 50 years. Uh, it was eating the scraps, shoving them in the side of its mouth, and it actually verbally spoke to him. I have that video if y'all want to see it. I'll put it in the link. Uh, put the, yeah, I'll put the that video in the link. Uh, you know, it came down to back then, they weren't real, real, really worried about locking their doors. And it got to where, I mean, that was just a very common thing. And the kids, would, she said, would even, you know, Granny said, would double check, triple check, you know, quadruple check the doors, the windows. They had dowel rods cut, two by fours that went in the windows to keep them from raising the old windows. Uh, you know, you had more adult supervision. Your kids weren't allowed to play, you know, as far out from the yard and they were told to stay in the yard and you know the adult was outside with them you know all the time that, that a lot of that changed and then just you know staying you know preparing for staying indoors at night they uh they had uh, an outhouse at the time and the outhouse was you know about 50 yards 75 yards from the house it wasn't none of them going to walk out to the outhouse like that at night so you get something that you can use inside the house and um, there's a funny story to that that will be in the book. And, you know, you start, you know, just preparing for night duties. You feed earlier, you're in the house earlier, you're not at the barn, and everybody's inside, the door's locked, and you buckle down. Uh, lock down the hatches. But uh, Billy's father said he originally thought his son must have been mistaken about what he had saw. About a week ago, later... Uh, later, Billy's two-year-old sister, Melissa, became hysterical when she was frightened after seeing a bear in the window, and that's in parentheses. Perry and his son immediately got their rifles and circled the house, each going a different way. I do not suggest doing that from a tactical standpoint and having training unless you are very well trained and very well disciplined. That could lead to a, to a bad shot. Unless you know what you're doing and you know your partner, I strongly suggest you stay together, not only because you're more vulnerable separated but also just because you can mistake the other person and um like i say from a tactical standpoint and training that you better know what you're doing if you do that it could turn out bad because people do panic get scared see things and shoot and ask questions later uh they uh they you know they, they was having a lot of trouble with this thing it's up at their house now it's looking in their windows they said uh, they got the rifles. They could smell the odor of sewer, and the stench was terrible. My uncle had the same thing when it followed him to my granny's. His car was covered in a stink that they could not get off of it. It was fish scales, uh, <clears throat> like, uh, like it's not seaweed because we don't have uh, lakes around here, or salt water, but it was real lakey, that mossy stuff all over the car. And I think that's how it found their house. But, you know, 
my granny said, you know, even when they had it follow him back, you know, they would have to uh, take the windows and they hung uh, blankets up over the windows, heavy, thick blankets, so that, you know, the creature outside couldn't see into the home. So it wouldn't know where they was at because it would follow them from room to room as they would maneuver in the house. Also, you know, it would try the doorknobs, and I've seen that happen when I was down there. It would twist the doorknobs and push on the doors. It followed me from room to room in the house, and that's in the book. Um, I think it heard us walking because it was an old house, and when you walk in the old houses, there's creeks, and it probably followed the creeks and the cracks as you walked. And when you get to that back door by that bathroom that they later installed, indoor plumbing, when I was down there, and you go to make that turn into that bathroom, which was an add-on at the very back of the house, it hit that doorknob, and you hear the door creak. It shoved the hell out of it, which later that door was fixed, and uh, that'll be in the book. Um, you know, when stuff's trying your doorknobs and stuff, you know it's trying to come in. A few days later, while hunting for coyote, Perry heard a barking noise, and they saw a coyote cross toward a strange animal. But he couldn't get a clear shot at it. When the coyote arrived at the place where the animal was barking, now this animal was making barking noises at him. There was a short, terrible fight with growls and screams. The coyote only yipped a couple of times. The screams were not that of an animal that he had heard before, but loud, vocalized screams that rattled his insides. See there, to me, this thing is doing what I call the lure. It is barking. It's calling the coyote to it. Same as it does us. It makes baby cries. They're, they know how to lure you. They are masters of their domain they know what they're doing they've done this remember at least 35,000 years that they know of and that you know this back to the uh, Neanderthals and it could even be before that but the next day Perry found a spot where something had made short work of the coyote the coyote was shredded everywhere and the main parts of the coyote the uh, entrails the uh, organs were all eight now there's a place I'm going to be uh, revisiting, and um, you remember I went on a hunt the other day on my other channel, and while I was on the hunt, it was very, very foggy, and um, the camera didn't do justice, but I went in there, and I was squirrel hunting, and when I squirrel hunt, of course, I still carry my sidearm, and I'm having a shotgun, and uh, I could carry a super full choke, and I always keep slugs on my side just in case I run across something that's, you know, not small game. And I had seven and a half ounce shot in it. That's what I use with the super full. But anyway, uh, while I was out there, I got this really weird feeling I was being watched and like something was following me. And usually a lot of times it doesn't bother me, but you know, I'll go down there alone a lot and never have any trouble. And I was alone and I couldn't see real far in the fog and everything. And I just started having this feeling, man, something's circling me. So I sat down on this big tree that had fell and I put my back to it. And uh, this tree was huge, and my back's to it, then there's water behind me. So I could hear anything coming behind me. It's very calm. And I could see everything in front of me and to the sides. So I put myself where I was able to, you know, have a good view and cover my back. And while I was sitting there, I could hear this thing circling me, circling me, circling me. And I sat there for some time because the water was falling out of the trees from the fog, and it was nice. And there's no squirrels, none at all. But this place had signs of squirrels everywhere. There was pecan cuttings. There was acorn cuttings. There was, you know, squirrel homes. There was you know, uh, holes into the trees. This place is usually full of squirrels. There was none. And, um, anyways, I'm sitting there and I see like a few squirrels, you know, at a time, but nothing like you normally do. And I hear this while well, I turn around and I go back over and the fog's lifting a little bit more. And as I walk over there, I didn't put this in my video on that channel because YouTube really frowns on it and they probably would have pulled my video and put a strike against me. But, uh, there was a deer stash there. Something had shredded a deer and I took photographs of it and I put the pictures on my Facebook page for my other channel and Something shredded that deer. Well, the reason I'm bringing that up is because I went down there again the other day And I've got some more photos and this is by a friend of mine's uh, Area he don't live there, but it's close enough. I mean this is the middle of nowhere, but he's probably six miles away Something went down there and shredded some wild hogs guys I mean, it shredded a huge hog, the mama, and it killed every baby. Now, you would think it ate them, right? It didn't. I looked at them. It gutted them. Totally gutted them. Every one of them was gutted. 
all of the organs were gone. But not a piece of meat was gone. It just grabbed them, gutted them. The babies, they were gutted. I mean, from there to there. And uh, I'm going to be going back there. And the reason I bring that up, this is the same location where I found that what I call the Bigfoot house. It's way down in there. And this is the same area where all this is happening. So I'm thinking there may be a clan living down there that is comfortable enough that they have built homes because we found one. And I plan on going back there, guys. I'll try to get down there as soon as I can, but I'm going to need a lot different armament when I do that. Because whatever is down in there now is slaughtering the animals. There's hardly no squirrels. The deer was killed. He was, entrails gone, but it had done a little cutting on the deer. So I think it was actually eating the deer. And the pigs were just, it's almost like whatever's down there right now is acting out of control. Like it's angry, mad. I don't know. I won't go as, you know, I don't want to speculate too much. But I wanted to share that with you guys and let you know I will be going there. So watch for that video to be coming out. Make sure that bell's clicked. Make sure you're subscribed on my Facebook channel. I'm on TikTok now. I'll put, you know, it just uh, TikTok, same name. Uh, Instagram, same name. And I'm going to try to start posting that on there so y'all can at least get alerted. Because y'all know y'all it's not getting alerted. Facebook page helps a lot of people get alerted. But moving on. There was assorted amounts of coyote hair and everything just shredded. So, uh, late one night, heavy animal ran around the corner of their house again miss perry in the north bedroom and perry in the living room on the south end of the house watching a late movie both heard footsteps the dogs met whatever this was at the corner of the house and briefly tangled with it reddish brown hair with a strong odor was found there later they said they also turned that over to the fbi uh, forensic labs never heard back the following night, the animal staged a repeat performance without the dogs. The dogs were then afraid. The dogs would not go meet it, and the dogs would cower on the porch. Again, it was late, and the sound of the animal running woke Miss Perry up, a very large, heavy-footed animal. In the meantime, Billy noticed the sewer odor around the pig pen and heard something crouching through the brush. It's funny, my granny and grandpa had pigs, too, and we were just talking about pigs. Billy claimed he could smell the sewer odor that was stronger than the hogs, Linda said. Seven or eight men came out Monday, Lonnie said. I had to go to work, but they hunted it. The hunts did not uh, turn up any animal, but Perry said tracks were found. Very large bipedal tracks. That averaged anywhere from 16 to 22 inches. With 11 and a half inches wide. A month and a half later, a little more than 40 miles southwest of Vicky, as the crow flies, Alex Emman of Raiden and his son-in-law, George Springer of Roger Mills, saw an animal they cannot explain. The two men were feeding the cattle southwest of Cheyenne on a land that has been largely undisturbed by human habitation and saw an animal that Emman described as bigger and broader than a dog would be. The dark-haired animal didn't have much neck. It had plenty much set down on its shoulders, Emman said. It walked on four legs. The cattlemen pulled up to the pasture and started honking their pickup horn to call the cattle in to feed before they saw the animal. Springer said it did not seem to be afraid of them and wasn't in a big hurry to leave. They had plenty of time to get a good look at it, even though it was quite a little ways off. While moving off on all fours, it stood up a foot taller than a coyote would have and a lot wider, he said. It didn't look like anything I'd ever seen before. It was dark brown and white. Springer went on, it wasn't fuzzy or furry, but slick haired like a pig. It wasn't kind of a smooth moving. It didn't bounce or anything. It just moved really smooth through the grass. The two men watched the animal until it disappeared into the heavy brush. People won't mention seeing this creature because they're afraid of being laughed at, but this happens a lot down here in Cheyenne. But she says that about five or six years ago, something was digging at the foundation of their house near Cheyenne one night. No one dared to venture outside and see it because of the sounds how large it was by walking, and the breathing sounds, it had to have been huge. Growls and angry noises came from the animal, and it went to the kitchen window where the light was on, she said, and turned the light out. And another one, the animal left the dark window and came to the lighted one, she added. That happened at my granny's I don't know how many times. They love windows. The next morning, Miss Sasser checked for tracks. The animal had tried to dig under the foundation instead of trying to get in the window. The tracks were like dog tracks, but as big as a man's hand. She said no claw marks showed in the tracks, but the claw marks did show where the animal dug against the house. Whatever it was, it finally gave up and went away. 
More than one person described the tracks being shaped like a dog track, but very large with human-like toes. There you go, guys. That is a that is a freaky story with a lot of different people seeing a, seeing it at at the same time. That really caught my attention. Uh, I got another video I'm working on, and it is going to be a uh, very graphic video. It may not be for everybody. I was asked to look into it, and I did, and I did find some things I don't think you all know about. Uh, it's it's very graphic, so I want to warn you on that video. It's coming out. I will have a warning on it. But uh, don't forget, guys, if you have not liked and subscribed to this video, I'd appreciate it if you would do it. It's free. Just reach down right now. Hit the subscribe. Hit the bell. Click all. That helps me so much at getting more videos out to you guys. It supports the channel. Um, I can't tell you how much that helps for you all to hit like and leave a comment. That is so important. That helps me so much right now. YouTube is really strong on analytics right now. Anybody that's getting a lot more of that than us, they're going to start pushing us to the back. So it's free. Like I said, if you don't mind, just hit subscribe. Give me a like. Say, hey, how you doing? If there's nothing else, it helps a lot. Um, I will put the... Uh, the link to the uh, videos in the bottom of this so y'all can go check out what I'm talking about whenever I tell you about the uh, I believe it was the 50 years when I'm gonna I'll put down there so y'all can go check that out it's a it's a letter that I read and um, I think y'all would benefit from hearing it it was pretty important to me and um, I will also put a link to my other channel down there and y'all can go and uh, look at the hunting video. A lot of people have went from, you know, this channel and support me over there. And I appreciate that. I'm very, very humbled by that. But also you can see that video there. And uh, you'll be able to look at it and see if you all see anything. A lot of people are seeing it. They're bringing my attention to it. Just uh, email it all or talk on the uh, abnormal page. If not, if I do a lot of that on my other page, they will not allow comments because the kids are on the other page. Uh but if you want to, you can go there and take a look at it. If you want to see the photographs, subscribe to my Facebook page, Wide Open Adventures. I'll put the link to it down there, and you'll be able to see the photos. And I will be posting the photos of the hogs and stuff that got slaughtered. And uh, you'll be able to see more of that there also. But uh, I appreciate each and every one of you watching. Thanks for spending this morning with me. Keep your head on a swivel, and we'll see you next time.